Paid neuroscience education is more of a communication style to communicate with our patients and really educate them on a deeper level about the neuroscience around pain, the experience that we understand and all the components that are going to affect how they're going to process a pain experience. And we can use that to change their perceptions of pain and help them understand the things that are in their control and help them move towards behavior change through that education. You can deliver it a lot of different ways. You can do it on an individual short story, you can use metaphors, you can use a fire hydrant approach, you can do this in group settings as well as individual. Um, there are a lot of resources that are being developed from like a workbook standpoint, flashcards. There, there's a, almost any learning preference that a patient can have, you can target that with one strategy of pain neuroscience education or another. Fire hydrant is kind of where we overload them with information almost. It's definitely not a standalone approach. If you're going to kind of give patients that wide range of education and kind of a little bit blow their minds, then you want to be able to follow that up with more short stories and kind of reinforce what you're giving them. Because anytime you overload them with information, there can be that kind of glazed over effect that will come with that. And we want to make sure that they're, you know, internalizing the information that we're trying to communicate to them. Well, I think pain neuroscience education can be delivered by physical therapists, pain psychologists, medical providers, nurses, and I think it's it's used to, as Jamie mentioned, to really help patients change their perception of their own pain experience. So we want to get them actively engaged in behaviors that increase activity, turn down the volume of the nervous system, and to really help patients understand that although pain is physically painful, it's not actually dangerous in those moments. So we're changing their perception of their pain experience and getting them actively involved in how to manage it. Because again, they're the VIP of their team. They're the ones that, ha you know, they can't take us home with them. So they have to learn how to use these different strategies on a moment to moment basis. And it's all toward moving toward function, getting them back involved in the things that are really important to them. JV and I hope that more providers will get interested in pain neuroscience education, uh, whether you're a physical therapist, a physician, a nurse, or, or a pain psychologist. Uh, we want to be able to empower our patients toward change. We want to instill hope in them that what they do truly can make a difference um, and give them those, those, that confidence and those tools to really take back their life. Yeah, changing the way that we communicate with our patients and the way we educate them around a medical diagnosis that can really influence their traje trajectory throughout their treatments. If they don't have a good understanding and we're not kind of calming down fears, that we're probably feeding into catastrophization a little bit. And so changing the way that we're communicating to our patients, even from a primary care standpoint, when they come in with acute pain, how do we react to this? How do we educate them on what's happening? We can affect their whole trajectory as time goes by. So hopefully more physicians and primary care providers and all a plethora, you know, there's not a domain that's not affected by the communication with their providers. So every discipline kind of moving forward, just recognizing the power of our words and how much impact we actually will have on that patient and their perception of their situation.